Right. Hello. I was hoping I would be back with you guys today, but unfortunately I'm not. So hopefully I will see you on Tuesday. We're going to go ahead and go through the notes on Envision segment 1.1, the angles part. Hopefully you have the notes to fill in along with me through this. So again, Chapter 1, Essential Question, what are some of the fundamentals of geometry? The essential question for 1.1, how are the properties of segments and angles used to determine their measures? So after today, you should be able to use the properties of angles to find their measures. So we're going to start out with what is an angle? An angle is formed by two rays with the same endpoint. Each ray is a side of the angle, and the common endpoint is the vertex of the angle. So in this picture, we have ray QR and ray QP. They have common endpoint Q, so therefore they make an angle. So we want to talk about first how we can name an angle. So we're going to look at how to name an angle. There are several different ways to name an angle. The important thing to remember is that your vertex must always be in the middle. So I use the angle symbol, which looks like that. And then I can go in either direction, starting at R. I would say angle R, Q, P. Or I could say angle P, Q, R. Notice how this angle has a 2 right here. Or I could say angle 2. One of these is the most common way with the three letters, but it would take the three letters to name it with the vertex in the middle. We are first going to look at our protractor postulate. Remember that a postulate is something that we cannot prove, but we accept to be true. The protractor postulate says given ray BA and point C that is not on ray BA, a unique real number from 0 to 180 can be assigned to ray BC. That's just like the ruler postulate which says if I put my ruler up against anything I can match it up with any number. Same thing with our protractor. You can put your protractor on anything and match it up to any number between 0 and 180. Next we want to talk about notation. If you have a lowercase m in front of an angle it's asking you for a measure and your answer will always be a number. Okay? which will be a degree, and you will use an equal sign. So now we're going to look at using the protractor postulate. So the first example, we're going to use this protractor over here with all of these rays. Notice I have ray EA, ray EB, EC, and ED. They all share common endpoint of E, so then I have all of these different angles that have been created. So the first one wants us to find M of angle BEC, so that's asking me for the measure of angle BEC. So B, E, C. I'm wanting this angle right here first. This is B, E, C. This is angle BEC. So in order to find this, if I take this big angle A E C since A starts at zero so I can take the measure of angle A E C subtract out the measure of angle A E B and then we would get the measure of angle B E C so first let's start out with a great big angle we read a protractor Notice that we always start with a zero. So the zero here is on the outside. So we will be reading the outside numbers going this direction. So if I start down here at zero and I go all the way up to where my C is, and notice there's 100 and then 110 here. So we are at 105 right there in the middle. So measure of angle AEC is 105 degrees. Minus, now I want the measure of angle AEB. Again, I'm looking at the outside numbers. Zero, I, here's 40, there's 45, so it <clears throat> looks to be approximately 47 degrees. That will get me the measure of angle BEC. So the measure of angle BEC is going to be, when I do 105, 
minus 47, I get 58, and that is going to be degrees. This is our degree symbol. So now the second one, find the measure of angle AEC. Well, we already did that in number one. So the measure of angle AEC is equal to, again, that was the AEC. So it's from here all the way up. We said that was about 105 degrees. And then we want the measure of angle BED. So BED, okay? again, we're going to have to do a little work. So this time I want, let me see if I can erase this stuff for us. So BED is this angle right here is what we're looking for. This is angle BED. Again, since I want to start at zero, I would have to take the great big angle AED. So this is going to be the measure of angle AED minus measure of angle AEB. So take this one out. And that's going to get us the measure of angle BED. So AED, so AED all the way out here. Again, we're starting at the zero. So we're reading the outside numbers. We follow all the way around. And where D falls is 130 degrees. Minus the measure of angle AEB. So the AEB, AEB, we had found already to be 47 degrees. So when we subtract those two, we get 83 degrees. So we would say the measure of angle BED is 83 degrees. Don't forget your degree sign as well, because there are more than one way to measure an angle. So we want to make sure that we use the degree sign so that we are showing we are using the degrees. Next, we have the angle addition postulate. Remember we talked about the segment addition postulate and we had an abbreviation for that, SAP or SAP. We also have the abbreviation for angle addition postulate, that is AAP. This simply tells me if point D is in the interior, so it's somewhere inside of angle ABC, then the measure of angle ABD, so the measure of this little angle, plus the measure of angle DBC, this angle, will equal the measure of angle ABC the great big one. So again, just like our segment addition postulate, I use the example of the candy bar. If I took a candy bar and I broke it in two pieces, add the two pieces back together, I have the whole candy bar. So again, if I have one big angle and I have it separated into two smaller angles, if I add the two smaller angles together, I get the big angle back. So now we're going to look at some examples using that. The first one we're going to talk about is this word problem. It tells us that a lighting designer is finalizing the lighting plan for an upcoming production. The spotlight, which this is the spotlight down here, can rotate 25 degrees to the left or to the right from the show position. The beam of light from the, stop, the spotlight forms a 22 degree angle. It wants to know, can the designer use the spotlight to light each ob of the objects on the stage? And it is labeling everything in there for you. So we're just going to come out here and I'm going to draw this again for us. So let's see, we have all of these angles. It tells me that this angle in here, this is the spotlight, is 22 degrees. It tells me that from the rug all the way out to the door here is 57. So this all the way across is 57. And then it tells me from the chair all the way across. So the entire angle itself, the great big angle, is 74 degrees. Okay. So I want to find out if 22 degrees is enough to go left and to right. So first thing I need to know is what is this little angle in here? And this little angle over here. So I'm calling this one X and I'm going to call this one Y. So first I need to find out what are these small little angles. This X, notice that 
This part of it is 22, but the whole thing was 57. So if I took 57 minus 22, I would get x. So x is 57 minus 22. So x was equal to 35 degrees. So this part here is 35 degrees. So now y, I know the entire thing was 74. So y is going to equal 74 minus this part. And then all that's going to be left is y. I knew that this whole part was 57. So y is equal to 17 degrees. So the spotlight okay, right here, if it can go 25 degrees to the left and 25 degrees to the right, would it be able to highlight everything on the stage? Notice the y. It only has 17 degrees to travel this way. So it would be able to travel to the right and pick up the table. However, since this is 35, 35 is greater than 25, it would not be able to spotlight the left. To the left, which is our chair. So then the next example, we're still using the exact same picture. This time it wants to know if they use a spotlight with a 33-degree 33, 33 beam angle that can rotate 25 degrees to the left and right. Um, could it then light all of the objects on stage? So we're going to draw this picture again. This time it's telling me instead of up here where it was 22, this time it is 33 is what the problem said. Everything else is still the same. So these two together is still 57. The entire angle is still 74. Again, I'm going to call this little part in here X and this little part Y. So to find X this time, it's the entire part minus this part. So 57 minus 33 x would equal 24 degrees. Now to find y, it's the great big angle, 74, minus this part, which we know is the 57. So y is equal to 17 degrees. So in order to highlight everything on the stage this time, I can go, it said, rotate, um, 25 degrees to the left and right. We only have to go 24 degrees to get the chair, 17 degrees to get the table. So this time, yes, it can highlight everything on the stage. All objects this time. So there's an example of using the angle addition postulate with a word problem. So now we have some more notation we want to talk about. Just like the segments that were congruent if they had the same tick marks, angles are also congruent that have the same tick marks. So angles that have the same measure are congruent angles. The same number of arc marks show congruent angles. And so again, notice I have angle VUT and angle ZYX, or I could have named them XYZ and TUV. They both have this one little mark, an arc mark inside, that's like a tick mark for an angle. They are the same. So again, I could say angle TUV is congruent to angle XYZ. Just like with the segments, if I'm using congruent, I have no idea what their measure is. I don't know the actual number, and it doesn't matter. I just know that they have the same number, therefore they're congruent. If I know the measure, the actual number, then we say M, the measure of angle TUV, equals the measure of angle XYZ, and we would actually know the number to plug in there. So some more examples. So example number three. We're looking at this picture over here to the right. It says if the measure of angle XWZ is 127. So they're telling me the entire angle out here is 127 degrees. They want to know what is the measure of angle WZ. I'm sorry, YWV, so they want 
this little part in here. Notice they told me that this was 32 and it has one arc mark. Okay? So I know over here I also have one arc mark. I know that that is also 32 degrees. So the measure of angle YWV is going to be the measure of the great big one, X, Y, Z, I'm sorry, X, W, Z, subtract these two right here. So if I take this one out and this one out, then I have what's left here. So I need to subtract the measure of angle X, W, Y, and also subtract the measure of angle VWZ. So the measure of angle YWV is equal to the great big angle, 127, minus each of these little angles, 32 and 32. So when we do that math, the measure of angle YWV is equal to Let's see, 63 degrees. So now we're going to do another one. We have this picture down here. This one tells me if the measure of angle NOP, so NOP, that's this little part in here. This is 31 degrees. The measure of angle NOQ, so NOQ, that's the entire angle, 114 degrees. It's wanting, what is the measure of angle RO? Q, this one over here. Again, I notice that both of these have one little mark, so I know that they're the same, so I can call them X and X. I know that if I add 31 and X and X together, I get 114. So I'm just going to write that out. 31 plus X plus X equals 114. Now it's a simple algebraic equation to solve. On the left-hand side, I want to go ahead and combine like terms. I have two x's, so 31 plus 2x equals 114. I'm trying to get the x by itself, so we're going to subtract 31 from both sides. Then we will get 2x is equal to 83, and finally divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to, so 83 divided by 2 is 41.5. Notice that I got a decimal. It's fine to have a decimal when you're dealing with angles. So each of these little angles in here is 41.5 degrees. So now I can say the measure of angle ROQ is equal to, we call that X, 41.5 degrees. So very, very similar to the segma addition postulate, the angle addition postulate. You had an assignment yesterday where you we're trying to work through these examples on Envision and then work out some problems on Envision. If you did not get that assignment done, you can finish that assignment after you do the worksheet that is being handed out to you. The worksheet that is being handed out to you today has both segment addition and angle addition on it as well. So please do the worksheet first and then you can go back into Envision and finish any assignments that you have not yet completed and get those submitted to me. And I hope to see you on Tuesday. Tuesday, we will pick up with the constructions. So on Tuesday, we would be using the ruler and the compass. Enjoy your weekend. Miss you guys.